Praise the Lord. We want to thank you for tuning in tonight in our Wednesday midweek service and choosing to worship with us. On behalf of Pastor Benny and Sister Evelyn, we welcome you and we greet you in the name of the Lord. And if you haven't already, you want to make sure you subscribe to this link. Send it to somebody that you know. Send it to a friend. Send it to a family member. Even send it to an unsaved loved one because God has a special word for us here tonight. Before we get started, we're going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We pray, Lord, that your spirit, Lord, would move, would move it in the midst of every single household, Lord, every single watch party, every single life group, Lord. We pray, God, your spirit will be evident, Lord. I pray that you would break chains, break yokes of bondage here tonight. Let your word fall on good ground here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus here tonight. Reckless 
love of God. Oh, He chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, You give Yourself away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor here tonight. God, we lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. How many just know that God is good? Amen. And once again, we welcome you. We thank you for tuning in tonight. And once again, we welcome you on behalf of Pastor Benny and Sister Evelyn. And throughout this week, we have watch parties going on. We have life groups going on. And if you want to know how to get connected, you can go to our website. It's victoryoutreachlasvegas.org, and there's a map right there, and you can look at the map, and you can see which life group is nearest to you, and you want to get there as soon as possible. Amen. Also, Friday night, we have our God's Anointed Now Generation service, which is our ministry for young adults and for students. Amen. And God is on the move, and our theme for the rest of this year is No Eye Has Seen. How many say that God is going to begin to do the impossible? Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and transition. We're going to take this opportunity to receive our tithes and our offering here tonight. And, and there's a very famous scripture that many of us know, and it's something that's even taught in the beginning of, of the Victory Homes, and it's Proverbs 3, 5. In the beginning of that scripture, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I believe that's something, that's, that's something that we need to be reminded of every single day, right? Because we can trust in our job. We can trust in the finances that we already have in the bank. But how many of us know we need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart? And we're going to go ahead and give here tonight. There's a few ways that you can give. You can text VO Las Vegas to 77977. You can mail your offering into the PO box right there. Or you can scan the QR code that's right there on your screen. But we need to continue to put our trust in the Lord. How many know that God has been faithful? Amen. In this season of, that it may seem like a season of famine for, for most, but God is taking care of His people. Right? There's, there's many of our members of the congregation that are purchasing houses, that are getting promotions, and God has been faithful through it all. Amen? So if you're ready to give, we're going to go ahead and pray for our offering here tonight. Father, we come before you. We lift up the offering up to you. God, we pray, Jesus, that you would multiply the finances. Lord, use them to further your gospel, Lord. And I pray, God, you would bless the sower. God, bless those that are even unable to give, Jesus. And Lord, we pray, God, that you would do what only you can do here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that our hearts are prepared for the Word of God here tonight. And we have a very special speaker with us. He's a graduate of our Victory Homes. He's a graduate of Veti, and he's also an instructor for Veti. He has a baby boy coming on the way really, really soon, and he's an associate pastor here within our church. He has a title here tonight, An Overcoming Attitude. Let's put our hands together and welcome up Pastor Reggie Cooley Sr. Good evening, and, and praise the Lord. I uh, want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, got a powerful word, I believe, that God has laid upon my heart um, for our church, and not just for the church, but for the body of Christ here tonight. Uh, I'm excited about it, and I pray that you're blessed by it. Uh, you know, we're, we've been going through a, a season 
of uncertainty and um, what helps me and many of you that are viewing online is the, the, the comfort that we find in Jesus. Amen. So I just want to thank our pastors, Pastor Benny and Sister Evelyn here tonight uh, for their staying power. They're keeping, uh, God's keeping them uh, where they're at. Amen. And, and just discipling so many other people. And so tonight I have the privilege and it is a privilege to share the word of God. And so um, I'm going to open tonight uh, in uh, a word of prayer. And then I'm going to get into a scripture. I'm just going to park it right there. I'm not going to probably not going to jump too much around, but uh, I believe that God has given me the scripture and his word uh, in this season for all of us to edify the body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, in Jesus name, we just come before you tonight, God. Lord, I just thank you, my God, for the privilege, the opportunity, God, to be a vessel, my God, of your word, Lord. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will move mightily here tonight, Lord. Use me, my God. Fill me, God, with your word that it will transmit, my God, through these airways, Lord, to everyone that is hearing, God, everyone that is viewing, God. God, that will bring a word of encouragement. It will be a word of, of transformation, God. And I thank you, Lord, for what's going to take place in their lives through this word, God. And we give you the glory, the praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And so as I was meditating on uh, and praying and separating on God, like, what do you want to say to the church? We've been hearing so many prophecies. We've been hearing so many things. We've been hearing the, the things uh, of, of uncertainty and, and people are falling away and, and people are, are and some people are digging in. But I pray tonight that those that are digging in, that dig in a little harder. And I pray that those that maybe have, have fallen away or drifted away, I pray that you come back. Amen. Uh, I want to open up with a, in a, in a story, the tale of two sons. There was a father. He had two sons, and he both raised them the same, except one thing. He told one son that you can never be a basketball player. He told the other son that you could be a basketball player. Amen? Well, the one son that became a basketball player, he became the basketball player because his father said he couldn't. The other son became a basketball player because the father said he could. See, both sons heard the same thing, amen? Uh, but the one capitalized on it because he said he couldn't. And many times we have people in our lives that tell us things that we cannot do. Many times we have people in our lives that try to put us down, try to shut us down, try to uh, belittle us. Amen. Uh, but I'm here to let you know that in the word of God, as we're going to share here tonight, I'm going to step out of the box here tonight. I'm, I've done a word study and I don't normally do a word study, but I believe that in the Greek and in the foundation and the roots of these words, we find their true meaning. And in that true meaning, we're able to, to find its strength. We're able to find uh, what it was meant to say. Amen. And so I open in the scripture here tonight. In Philippians 4.13, it says that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through who? Through Christ who strengthens me, another who gives me the strength. Amen? See, it seems that we live in a world where negativity is the rule of society. Negativity, you know, they got these TV shows back in the day called uh, Snaps or, uh, you know, Your Mama, right? All these things are negativity. And people, you know, it was, it, it were tuning in and they were dialed in because all is negativity. And, and, and many people think the worst and believe the worst and are always constantly talking about worst case scenario. Have you ever been there? Have you ever thought about a situation and said, what's the worst case scenario? Right. We're always thinking about the worst case scenario. But see, that shouldn't be the case for us as believers, as children of God, that those who bear the name of Jesus Christ should walk as he walked. Amen. That we should walk full of faith and confidence in the father. And I say the father because he is a good father. Before our, 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 our earthly father was, our father God is. Let me say that again. You can write that down. I said before our earthly father was, whatever our father figure was, amen, before he came into our life, before we opened our eyes and, and realized who he was and the words that he was saying to us, maybe he mistreated us or maybe he lifted us up or maybe he wasn't there, amen. I'm here to let you know that before that earthly father was, God the father is. In other words, he had a plan for your life that you're not an accident, you're not a coincidence, amen, that, that God purposed you to be in this time during this time, amen? Uh, he has a mission for you. He has a mission for us. And so before your earthly father was, our heavenly father 
is. He is one without beginning and one without end. Amen. He is the alpha, the omega. Amen. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Amen. He has not been created by any person, anything. He is. Amen. The great I am. And we should be able to take comfort in that. I look at this scripture and I'm, I'm reminded of who wrote it. Paul, the apostle Paul. Now, I'm also reminded of when he wrote it. Although Paul was in a horrible predicament at the time when he wrote the book of Philippians, he declared, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I want to look at this scripture today because it is loaded with insight and having an overcoming attitude. And that's the title of my message here tonight, an overcoming attitude, an overcoming attitude. I'm talking about going over the bar. Not doing the limbo, going under the bar, but being overcomers, amen? More than conquerors is what I'm talking about. Paul was in jail when he wrote this to the Philippian church, and he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But then, let's look at this, this phrase here. When Paul said, I can do, the phrase in the translation of the, the Greek word is iskaus, okay? It, it sounds like a funny word, right? Iskaus. Uh, and it's classical Greek, Old Testament Greek. In New Testament Greek, the word denotes the strength and power of God's. Mm, mm, mm. You missed a good place to say amen right there. See, when, when Paul was talking about Iskaus, it was noted to operate in individuals. Talking about a power of God's operating in individuals. It caused them to be superior to others, to be champions, to be victors, victorious. It gave the upper hand in every situation so that the individuals operating in Iskaus prevailed in every circumstance. In other words, when we say I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength, and we're using that word Iskaus, which is that strengthening and that power, amen, I can do, it's saying that we have an advantage over everything, everything little and big because of that power that's operating in us, amen? And then furthermore, Paul adds, I can do all things. The phrase, all things, is from the Greek word panta and the word pan with t attached. So I'm going to break it down as I'm stepping out of my comfort zone right here tonight. I don't normally do this, but God has given me a word, and I, I want to break it down, and, and not just in the Greek and the Hebrew, amen, but I want to break it down to the very last compound so we can walk away with some understanding. Can I get amen? Amen. So the word pan is an all-encompassing word that includes everything and excludes nothing. Let's look at it again. Pan is an all-encompassing word that includes everything and excludes nothing. And that little word, ta, denotes the smallest of things. So when Paul uses the word panta, he is proclaiming that through Christ, he has the upper hand on everything, over everything, with nothing excluded, including even the smallest of things. Amen? Let's, let's reread that scripture, amen, with these, uh, uh, substitute these words. It says, I have the Iskaus power operating in me. Ooh, I like the way that sounds. I have the Iskaus power operating in me, and it causes me to be superior, a champion, a victor. This Iskaus gives me the upper hand in every situation I face and causes me to prevail in every circumstance. This Iskaus power we see operating in Paul as we look at Acts chapter 27, verses uh, 27, amen, uh, through 28 and 5. I'm going to read a little bit. Acts 27, verse 27, and this is talking about Paul being shipwrecked. He says, now then the 14th night had come and as, as we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea. About midnight, the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land. And they took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little farther, they took soundings again and found it to be 15 fathoms. In verse 29, the fearing lest they wish we should around a ground in the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the skiff into the sea under pretense of putting out anchors from the prow, verse 31, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. 
Verse 32, then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. And as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them to them all to take food, saying, today is the 14th day. You have waited and continued with food without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment. This is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he said these things, they took the bread, they gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when they had broken it, he began to eat. In verse 36, then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. I'm going to go on. And in all, we were 276 persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out the wheat into the sea. And it goes on. And we're jumping down to uh, verse uh, 28, verse 1 says, Now when they had escaped, they then found out that they were on the island called Malta. In other words, they had the upper hand in this situation. This was the Iskaus power that Paul was talking about that was operating in him, that the Lord had given him a word that said, you will not die today, amen, that you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. How many can say amen? How many can remember finding yourself on your deathbed? How many can remember finding yourself in the hospital? How many can remember finding yourself uh, beat out and left out for dead and and, 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 and then the word of the Lord came to you. It may have came to you in the form of a doctor. It may have came to you in the form of a child. It may have come to you in the form of a, of a loved one. Or it may have come to you in the form of a random stranger. The Bible says that be careful how we treat strangers because those strangers, we could be entertaining angels unknown to us. Amen. But nevertheless, however that word came to you, or that word came to you, that you should not die but you shall live. I remember when I uh, found myself overdosing uh, after living a lifestyle of a drug addiction, amen, finding myself in the hospital, waking up, finding myself in the hospital after the doctors have uh, given me the charcoal to go coat my stomach, to, to, to revive me, to re bring me back to life. I remember there was a voice that came to me that said, I've called you and I have a purpose for you. And that was the day that somebody gave me the flyer to Victory Outreach. And that was the best decision I ever could have made, is, is accepting that flyer. Amen. I contemplated it. Amen. How many know we ask God for something? It don't always come in the way we think it should come. Amen. How many know we ask God for it in our prayers? It don't always be answered the way that we think it should be answered. Amen. But see, Paul right here is, is being used by God. And, and, and we look at it once again in Acts 14, 19, where uh, Paul, let me get there. Acts 14, 19. I love Paul. I, he, he was on a mission. God has called us to be on a mission, church. Paul, Acts 14, 19 says this. Then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there. And having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Now here's where it's at. Verse 20. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. Wait a minute. Did I just, did y'all, did y'all just catch that? They said they stoned him, they beat him up, dragged him out of the city. He got back up and went back in the city. So I'm here to declare to you tonight, that's that Iskow's power that's working, amen? That God has given us his, his, his resurrecting power, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of us, amen? That, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And they, let me let you know this, that it may form, amen, but it's not gonna prosper, amen? That God has mandated us, God has called us, God has purposed us for such a time as this victory outreach that, that even though we may get beat up, yes, even though we may get talked about yes even though we may get broken down or perplexed we're not persecuted amen we're not abandoned amen that God is still fighting for us here tonight and we look at this passage of scripture one more time that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me the word strengthen in the Greek word is a translation that means a a present active particle of endunamo now the word endunamo is a compound of in and dunamis. Now, many of you may know that dunamis. Dunamis means power, right? And the word in means to into, to put into, such as placing water into a vessel. And dunamis means power. 
But more importantly, it notes that that dunamis, come on somebody, depicted the forces of an entire army. In fact, the Old Testament Septuagint, the word dunamis was primarily used to picture the combined forces of a complete military. I'm going to say that again. Dunamis used in the Septuagint, right, is, is, is pictured as the combined forces of a complete military. When I say complete military, if you think about the military today, we have the Air Force, we have the Army, we have the Navy, and uh, we have what? The Marines. Amen? Come on, somebody. A complete military. And within those military forces, they have their own special forces. And within those special forces, you got some people in there you don't want to mess with. Amen. Uh, but, but they talk about a complete military. I'm talking about millions of people. Amen. With, with, with millions of, 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 of firepower, millions of people with, with manpower, millions of people, millions of power is what dunamis is talking about. So when we use these words in and dunamis, as a compound word, it means that the power of a whole army is being deposited into a person. Woo! See, well, I'm talking about an overcoming attitude. In Bunimus, the compound a word that means a, a complete army, the power of a whole army being deposited in a person. When I think of that, I, I, think, of, I think of the Hulk. Come on, somebody. I think of the power that the Hulk had come upon him, amen? And he had this power that he could take out a whole army. Y'all seen the movie? He did too, didn't he? In Avengers or Hulk, one of the movies, he took out the whole army, you know? But he had a, a power that came upon him that was deposited inside of him. Making this even more significant is the fact that Paul used it in the present active Particle, which means he was declaring this type of power was presently active in him and will continue to express itself through him. Even though he was in prison, he was saying that this power, this indunamous power is still acting, is presently acting inside of me. I'm here to ask you here tonight, is that power acting inside of you? Is that power living inside of you? Have you laid hold to the power that God has reserved for you? Amen? The measure that God has given you, have you laid hold to it? That's the question. If you have not, lay hold to it. He was telling us that deposited in his spirit and at his disposal was the equivalent of an entire fighting army. I wish I could have heard that amen right there. I pray that someone would get this in their spirit here today. I pray that someone that's viewing online right now tonight that, that will begin to lay hold to that indunamous power, that will begin to lay hold to that resurrecting power to let you know that, that you're, you're not defeated, to let you know that, that you're not a below, but you're up above, to let you know that you're more than a conqueror. I wish somebody would get this in their spirit here tonight and to not throw in the towel to not walk away too soon, amen, to not give up, to not quit, amen, but to reach in and lay hold to that dunamis power that God has, has given each and every one of us. See, if Paul could write this in the horrific situation, he was in prison once again, and really mean it, there's absolutely nothing you face that you can't overcome to. There's absolutely nothing Nothing, no thing, that's a compound word, no thing, nothing that you face that you cannot overcome to. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Sometimes people, we got to talk to ourselves. We need to encourage ourselves like David did. David, went; he would encourage himself in, in, in the Lord. Many times, they're not going to be that person to, to, to be there to encourage us, you know, to pick you up and say, it's going to be all right. Yes, we need that at times, but I'm here to let you know that, that we have an ever-present Father that's, that's here in times of in need, amen, that he will be there, that he will encourage you, he will pick you up. But we got to talk to ourselves. We got to declare it. We got to talk to the Lord and let him know, man, God, I can't 
do it alone. I, 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 I can't do it by myself. I need you, Lord. I need you to come in and, and strengthen me. I need you to come in and set me straight. I need you to come in and remove these crazy thoughts that I've been having and put me back on the horse so I can get back in the battle. Somebody say, get back in the battle. Amen. I heard you. I heard you. So God's Ishkal's power is available to you as well to cause you to be superior, to be a champion, to be a victor, victorious, and to have the upper hand in every circumstance you face. See, when he filled you with this Holy Spirit, he infused you with the ability of a whole army. Come on, somebody. There's power, resurrecting power, residing within us. Greater is he that is within me, come on somebody, than he that is in the world. And he continues to infuse you and I with the strength at this very moment. Your flesh may tell you that there's no chance you're going to make it. There's no chance that you're going to overcome. Your flesh may tell you that, 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 that you should just give up. Your flesh will try to tell you that you might as well throw in the towel, that, that there is no hope for you. But those are the lies from the pits of hell, amen? My Bible tells me that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, amen? My Bible tells me that I'm the apple of his eye, amen? And my Bible tells me that I'm a royal priesthood. Listen, people, it's time for us to start acting like child and children of God. There's power he has given us, authority he has given us. And soon, once you embrace that, you'll find a supernatural flow of divine power coming forth from your inner person that will give you the upper hand in whatever situation you find yourself. In other words, you know that button? Everybody, some people have that button. Right? You say, oh, that person pushing my buttons. Right? Oh, that person pushing my buttons. Uh, uh, when you find yourself filled with this Holy Spirit, when you find yourself filled with this dunamis power, when you find yourself, amen, living out, out loud for the Lord, you will find that that button that you used to have, that people used to push, right, is broken. You will find that that button no longer works. You'll find that, that when people rub you the wrong way, that you don't respond the wrong way. Oh, you may respond in such a way like, praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. Amen. I'll pray for you. Amen. Don't just say it. Do it, though. Amen. But, but you'll find that that button is broken. There is no button for them to push. There is no way for you to respond in the wrong way. Why? Because your button has been broken. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, break the button. Amen. Now, rather being dominated by your mind, body, and negative emotions, you will find that you have become a mighty instrument of God's hand through whom his power can and will operate. I'm going to say that again. When you find that you have become a mighty instrument in God's hand through whom his power can and will operate in you and through you, regardless of whatever you face, you will have an overcoming attitude that prevails in every situation. I'm reminded of a time uh, when Reggie Jr. was uh, doing karate and uh, he had made it to the Junior Olympics. We had gone out to uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, a lot of kids, it was the uh, Junior Olympics for karate and or Taekwondo and we we're right there and and his coach she had so many kids and 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 I was always there I was always there to, 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 to be there to help him and to guide him and and I remember one time and he was doing sparring they put the little pads on you know the pads had a big old red dot another your opponent had a big old blue dot and you had the head gear on and you had the arm gear on and you had the shin guards on they were all padded up right man but the way you scored points was that you tagged your opponent in their big, you know, in the big circle that they had on their, on their gear. Now his coach comes to me and says, look, uh, uh, Reggie, I'm gonna need you to um, be in his corner because we're, we're, we're limited on coaches and, and just, just need somebody there to, to, to be there in this corner. I said, okay, I'll be there in this corner. It's my son, I'll be there in this corner, praise God, amen. So we, I'm sitting in the corner and then the judge, the, the karate guy, he comes over and he tells the two young boys to come together and, and to bow and to get ready to, to spar, right? 
And I'm, I'm, uh, and he blows a whistle and they start sparring. And I see the two guys, they're dancing around, they're dancing around, they're dancing around, amen. And they're tagging and they're tagging and tagging. And then I, I see the ref go over and he raises the other young boy's hand. I mean, he, he won that round. I said, wait a minute. I said, come here, Reggie, come here. So he sits in the corner, he, I'm talking to him. I said, look, this little boy right-handed. When he do this, you do that. And when we do this again, you do that again. Now, keep in mind, uh, Reggie at the time, and you guys know my son, maybe you don't, maybe you do, but he wears glasses like his daddy, amen? <laughs> at, at, at the age of nine, he was still wearing glasses. <laughs> amen, but they were a little thick then. But he didn't have his glasses on. He can't have no glasses when you're in there you know, doing karate, right? So he has glasses on. But I didn't know how bad his vision was, amen? I didn't know he couldn't see, see. So I tell him, look, when you do this, you do that. And when you do this, you do that again. He said, okay, dad, I got you. So he goes back in, he hops around, he hops around, amen, he hops around. And he starts tagging, he starts throwing punches, he starts throwing punches. He start, and, he, and, he's, and he's tagging them, he's hitting them. And, and then the, the round ends and the judge comes back and he raises Reggie's hand up. And I'm like, yeah, good job, son. He comes back over and then when I tell him to do it again, you know, round three, we go back out there, he does it again, do, 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 do. boom, 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 boom. He gets a guy in the, in the red, you know, in the circle, boom, 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 the ref comes back. Raises Reggie Jr. hands up again. I was like, man, that is awesome. That was great. He comes back over and he tells me, I said, man, you, you, you really picked it up the second and third rounds. I said, what? You know, you really listened. Amen. He said, dad, I just want to let you know something. I said, what, son? He said, I couldn't see. I was just throwing punches. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many know that, you know, God has called us to do something like that, amen? That we may not see everything that's taking place, but when he was in his corner, he listened to his corner. And I'm encouraging you here tonight that you have so much power that God has reserved for each and every one of us, amen? To have an overcoming attitude. That when you're backed into a corner, listen to your corner, amen? I pray tonight that you were blessed by this message. I pray that uh, those that are viewing online, like I said, that if, if you've strayed from the Lord, if you found yourself on the outside looking in, I want to let you know that you're not forgotten. Jesus loves you. He wants you to come back home. He wants you to, to, to rededicate your life because right now there's a lot going on. And right now he's pouring out his spirit upon his people to make a stand. And for those that are standing, do all that you can to stand. I want to pray for those that are viewing, that maybe you're not in right standings with the Lord. Maybe you find yourself uh, uh, always struggling. Maybe you find yourself always in the flesh. Maybe you find yourself uh, not being able. But I'm here to let you know that God is able. I want to pray for you tonight. And I pray that through this prayer that you would find your way home. I pray that through this prayer that, that God will move in such a mighty way that he will show you how great and mighty he is. That you will have your own experience like Paul did. You have your own experience with the Lord. And there's no greater experience than that. There's no better presence than right there in the presence of the Lord. I want to pray for you right now. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, for those that are viewing online that, God, you've touched them. You've brought them to this place, God, to hear the right message at the right time. And I know, God, they may be struggling through something. I know, God, that they may be going through something. I don't know what it is, Lord. Lord, but you know where they are. You know the silent petitions of their heart, God. And God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to move in their hearts, to remove the pain, to heal the hurt, to cause them to be renewed in your name, Jesus. And not only renewed, God, but give them a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging, a sense of direction, that they may know that they're not an accident. They're not a, a, a coincidence, God, but this was a divine appointment. And I pray, God, that your hand be upon them, God, to lead them and guide them. We thank you here tonight, Lord, and I give you the glory, the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you tonight. Praise the Lord. I pray that many of us were stirred up here tonight. Amen. We, that we would take our place within the call of God and take our place within this ministry. And, and God is on the move. Our church is on the move. We want to be plugged in. We want to be in tune with what God's doing. We want to make sure that you stay tuned with what God's doing within our church. You want to subscribe to this link. Amen. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.